Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're going to dive into the topic of H. pylori and nausea. We did a longer podcast on the topic recently. We'll put the link down below so you guys can check it out. H. pylori is a gut infection, upper small intestine infection, and can create digestive issues, mood issues, energy issues, and a common side effect is nausea. We're going to dive into all of that. Before we do, please smash that like button. really helps. Put your comments down below. Let me know your side effects that you've experienced with H. pylori. Make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications of all the great content we have coming moving forward. All right, so let's dive in. H. pylori is a bacterial infection. It's a gram-negative bacterial infection, meaning it's got two cell walls and these little spikes called lipopolysaccharides or endotoxin. These endotoxins can create gut permeability issues, inflammation, stress, and in the gut. Uh, it can also, H. pylori creates an enzyme called urease, which can take the urea from protein metabolism, spits off a whole bunch of CO2 and ammonia. CO2 makes you gassy, and the ammonia raises up your pH, i.e. making you less acidic, more alkaline in the stomach, which is not a good thing because we want the stomach to be very acidic, around a pH of 1.5 to 2.5. And we need a nice acidic pH so we can break down protein, break down fat, activate our proteolytic enzymes. Uh, that nice low pH activates our pancreas and our gallbladder so it can work better down the intestinal tract. And we need really good digestion. If we don't have good digestion, food rots in your tummy. It ferments, it putrefies, it rancidifies, and this can create gas. This can create that feeling of nausea and indigestion. When you have high levels of methane and hydrogen gases in your stomach, it screws up motility, so the food either moves too fast or too slow, and it's in a sense signals that make you feel not so good. Nausea, dizzy, that kind of in-between you want to puke kind of feeling, right? But you don't quite puke. That's really what nausea is. And when we have low stomach acid, when we have increased lipopolysaccharide, when we have increased inflammation, when we're not absorbing our amino acids, our fatty acids, our vitamins, our minerals, our micronutrients correctly, that's going to create problems in our metabolism. There's studies out there on H. pylori and how it can affect mood and cognition and energy. And that's because when you affect amino acid, digestion and assimilation and you affect mineral digestion and assimilization and ionization, you're not going to get the building blocks to help your body perform optimally. And when you have inflammation and maldigestion, one of the major side effects is going to be nausea. So first things first, you want to see a functional medicine doctor with getting a comprehensive plan of attack to address this thing. You don't want to do kind of spot treatment, but some of the things I've used clinically, that being said, ginger and ginger tea is amazing, has some really good anti-nausea and nice anti-inflammatory, anti-biofilm. Biofilms are the protective shields that bacteria use. It kind of takes that shield away, okay? We'll also use enzymes and acids to help better digest and break down our food. We'll do simple strategies like pre-digest our food, stews, soups. We'll make sure our foods are really cooked thoroughly. We'll make sure we're chewing our food thoroughly. We'll make sure we're not consuming excess water outside of maybe a couple of ounces to get some pills down if we need during our meal. We're also going to make sure we decrease our sympathetic nervous system. Good breathing, meditation, prayer. These are all really good techniques to get your parasympathetics going, which help activate enzymes and acids and key digestion. So very, very important that you get good parasympathetic nervous system tone. Uh, outside of that, we may want to look deeper at doing testing so we know what's going on. Some people come in, I see them as patients, they're like, I know I have this infection, and they may have it, but they may have a whole bunch of others. So I always tell my patients, you have the right to have more than one infection happening at the same time, and a lot of times that's the case. So people kind of glom on to one infection, and that's okay, but you may have more than one thing going on. So we, we want to have a systematic sequence if we have candida or H. pylori or blasto or other infections and how we address it. We also may want to add in extra healing nutrients. Uh, I use a product called GI Restore that has L-glutamine, aloe, DGL. It has zinc carnosine in there. Uh, these, are diff these are nutrients that really help calm down the gut lining. One study on zinc actually showed with uh, post-marathon running, there was gut permeability with extreme oxidative stress from exercise, that zinc actually helped decrease gut permeability. And that's excellent, because if we have a lot of gut permeability from stress or inflammation or diet issues, it's possible that you may have more permeability, which means more undigested food getting into that digestive tract. And if that's the case, you're gonna have more inflammation, right? More undigested foods, more LPS or bad bacteria, 
those are going to create more inflammation when they get into your digestive tract, into your bloodstream. Your bloodstream starts seeing these foreign particles. It starts tagging them and starts going after them. It's very, very possible that you have more inflammation because of gut permeability. Uh, so we want to test it. We want to know what kind of infections are there. We want to work through my 6R protocol. If you go to justinhealth.com and just type in the 6Rs of gut healing, you'll find an article on that topic. We'll try to put the links down below. I've gone into it many times on different podcasts, but the 6Rs are going to be very, very important. All right, well, let's dive into some questions. Let's see what we have. Crystal writes in, how much zinc is too much zinc to take daily? It depends, right? So I, I think anywhere between 20 to 30 milligrams is probably fine. You could probably go up to 50. You have to be careful if you go too high for too long, creating a copper deficiency. So just make sure you're consuming a lot of good zinc foods. A lot of the top zinc foods are also high in copper. So if you're going to do a long-term dose of zinc, make sure you get a little extra copper in there, a couple micrograms. Excellent. Let me keep on rolling here, see if I have any more questions. Lowering the gut pH could help. Is betaine HCL the same as berberine HCL for lowering the pH? No, berberine is going to be a herb. Typically, it's a family of herbs. So berberine could be organ grape. It could be barberry. It could be golden seal, right? These are all different berberine-containing herbs, and they have antibacterial effects. They also have supporting blood sugar effects and lowering cholesterol effects. Friends dad over 70 tested less viral load of H. pylori than last year, which is good. Drinks lots of ginger. What do you suggest he prioritize moving forward? He gardens every day. Well, I mean, I would work on knocking down the infection below the lab threshold. So when you say it's gotten lower, is it still considered positive on the lab or is it below the lab positive? Also, is he having any symptoms of H. pylori, like any acid reflux, any indigestion issues, any bloating or gas or bowel motility or regularity issues? Those would be important questions. I had H. pylori a few years ago. It was really bad. It caused ulcers in my stomach. I don't have my gallbladder either. Can I get it back again? I feel nausea and dizzy. I'm having dig digestive issues. Yeah, it's very possible that you got H. pylori back. It's very much is. There could be other infections going on that were never fully addressed. It's possible that too. So you definitely would want to get retested, work with a good functional medicine doctor to help you. Now, also, probiotics can be very helpful at calming down the gut, helping with gut permeability, and helping with gut inflammation. I typically don't recommend just taking probiotics palliatively. I like putting it in within a treatment program. But probiotics, bifidobacter, lactobacillus species, right, those can be very helpful at calming down the gut lining. Should I take HCL and pepsin when having bone broth? No, I would not. I heard a chiropractor say that there are natural trans fats that are good for us. Is that true? Yes, there are some natural trans fats in butter. Again, there's not a lot. It's just different, right? The hydrogenation process is an unnatural process. Uh, usually they're doing fats that are very damaged, right? They're using a lot of plant fats that have been refined and processed to heck. And then they process them and then they hydrogenate them. And so you typically have Basically, you have your carbon molecules connected and your hydrogens run like this, like, you know, like the referee says the field goal is good, right? When they go trans, one switches. And then when they switch, it becomes more heat stable, meaning it's able to handle higher heats, but it becomes more inflexible, right? So imagine like a plastic that's out in a cold weather, right? It may be heat stable, but it gets really inflexible. And the problem is we need fat to make up our cell membranes. So when you start consuming less good quality saturated fat and do more trans fat. One, you're getting a lot of omega-6 that's more pro-inflammatory prostaglandin two, but number two, you're making, you're, you're putting more fats in to make your cell membrane very inflexible and that's not good. And that makes your arteries stiff and more inflammation. So not a good thing. Diet dialed in, but the case of never ending toilet paper situation, heavy on digestive enzymes, what should I do? So if you're having a lot of diarrhea, which I'm assuming you need to get your gut tested. Does C. diff lower stomach acid? Um, C. diff creates digestive issues. The common ones are going to be diarrhea, but anything that creates stress and inflammation in your digestive tract, the sympathetic nervous system will <coughs> lower HCL and enzyme production because the more your sympathetics are activated, that's the fight or flight nervous system response. It's going to decrease enzyme and acid production naturally because your body, when it's stressed, doesn't want to worry about having to digest, it's trying to run, fight, and flee, and you're creating that little mechanism internally with um, microbial inflammation. I don't feel well eating salt. Is it possible to live only on a whole food diet without adding salt to my food? Well, 
it depends what you mean by salt, right? There's sodium chloride table junky salt, and then there's also high quality salt that has full spectrum minerals in it, like a Celtic or a Redmond or Himalayan sea salt. So you should be able to handle that kind of thing. You'd want to pinch it in some water and, and drink it like that. So um, it's a little bit more diluted. That's what I would try first and make sure it's a quality salt. If trying to do a low histamine to help allergies, but everything that's supposed to help allergies is high histamine, mushrooms, citrus, ACV, any advice of good things to start with? Yeah, I mean, just do a paleo, autoimmune, low histamine diet and cut those things out. Uh, I'm having hardest time finding a soy-free K2 supplement. I've read that fermented soy is bad for the thyroid. I have Hashi's because I have a goitrogen. Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, there's a lot of good K2 products out there, um, different brands that are out there. I know Orthomolecular makes a pretty good one. Um, Blue Pastures uh, makes a good one. That's a butter oil K2. Um, but as long as there's no soy in the ingredients, I'm totally fine with it. Not a big deal. And again, to make sure you get it uh, full, full quality with K2. Make sure there's no soy. A lot of the good ones have MCT oil in it, and that's fine. Uh, no diarrhea, just incomplete a lot of times, wondering how much of the digestive enzymes to start with. Yep, you have to follow my digestive calibration handout. So we start low, work our way up. That's it. All right, any other questions, y'all? Hope that helps. So in general, um, H. pylori, nausea, ginger is going to be very helpful. Peppermint oil is going to be very helpful. Um, enzymes, acid is going to be really helpful. Making sure you pre-cook your foods to make it easier to handle. All those are going to be great. And if you have infections, you have to get to the root cause of the infection. You can't kill too fast. Sometimes going after an infection too fast can actually cause more digestive issues. So you have to be very careful with that. I've been having ground beef and get a bit of mucus. What's happening? Well, some level of inflammation or food allergy reaction. You'd want to probably pull the grass fed or ground beef out and try some different proteins and rotate them up and make sure you're doing everything to help with the digestive process and you're not consuming other foods that are allergenic. Those are all good first steps. All right, y'all. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Please share the content around. If you need to work with myself or my colleagues, please feel free to reach out justinhealth.com. Hit the schedule button. We are here worldwide to help y'all out. All right, guys. Have a phenomenal day. Comments down below. Take care. Bye now.